I'm gonna give you the skinny, the lowdown on the tube call. That's my girls right there. Out of all the traveling I do, all the places I've been, I get asked lots of questions, tell lots of stories. The number one thing during turkey season without question is the tube call. <laughs> what I use it for 99% of the time is locating. And the reason I do that is because it'll generate a lot of sound. I know there's experienced turkey hunters out there that think this ain't the way to do it. That's okay. Hey, my perspective is a little different because I'm always in a new place. We're dragging TV crews around. It's different, but it's also effective. Wait, wait. That's, that's the way we do it. Wow. <laughs> now they make every kind of cylinder shaped tube calls you can imagine. People send them to me all the time and they all work. I mean, this little thing right here is tiny and I can get a yep out of this, although it's really, really old. That's a, that's a tube call. This one's made out of an old can of Dones Peels. That's a tube call. I used to make them out of uh, 35 millimeter film canisters. And here's a custom turn tube call. The reason I use this one, this is a Primo's call. Number one, there's like two of these dipped in bottom land. And I just always love this one. The reason I really love it is cause these have latex or whatever they got on them. Uh, you stretch it, put a rubber band around and get it where you want it. And I can do that. But this one has a reed that just snaps on. It just goes over the top and the reed is already stretched to a certain thickness. Now, I think this is latex. The reeds on my old tube call are silicone. I don't make them anymore. And I'm real careful with these, but it, they sound almost identical. This one I think is a little louder. It's probably psychological. But anyway, I ain't pushing Primo's tube calls. It's just what I got started with and I love it. I'm going to try to give you a, a tube tutorial, as Lauren calls it, on how I make the sounds in it. Again, it's not something that most people use to yelp a turkey up because it requires as much hand movement as a box or a slate. So there's really no advantage in that. I use it for a lot of different things, but mostly locating Texas. I can do a coyote. They don't have barred owls out there. You know, I can do a goose on it. I can do almost anything on it. But here's the skinny on how I use it. I'm going to try to explain to you where, where I'm putting my mouth and lips and stuff. I take my top lip and lay it over the very top of the reed. Just like that. My bottom lip is protruding right there at the bottom of where the reed comes across. 90% of what I do is cutting on this. And I'm saying putt, putt. I'm not trying to make that yelp note where you apply pressure and go high and low. To do that, you do it with your lip. You go high and low. I cut on it. When I'm cutting on it, I'm just saying putt. And it's just such a loud, sharp sound. Again, top lip over the top, bottom lip right even with that hole. Putt, putt. And to me, that's the best locator sound in the world. I'll find a place where I think, all right, I'm going to do it from here, and I'll do two or three notes. And then I'm listening. Boom, just like that. And it's a shot gobble. That's what you do when you're locating turkeys. You're trying to get them to shot gobble. That, that will shock them into gobbling. Again, top lip, almost covering the top of the call, bottom lip protruding in the slit right there. Put, 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 put. Now to yep on it, you push your lip out to get the reed up. Same thing you're doing with a mouth call with your tongue. The more pressure you apply, the higher the note. I'm just pushing my, my lip in. And to let the pressure off, you pull your lip back. And to yelp, you speed that up. Now, that may not sound that great in here in, this, in my tiny shop, 
but it sounds pretty dang good in the woods and it'll get you by. There's been a lot of times where I have yelped a turkey up with this, so I like to know how to yelp with it. Sometimes if I've got my vest handy, and one of the things when I did my dump bets you'll see was a TP, I'll, I'll grab some of that and put it up in the end of this to kind of muffle that sound to yell. That's, it's easy. Now it took a lot, a lot of practice to get to that point, but it's just another, it's, an, it's another weapon in your bag of tricks. And the louder you can get to cut on that thing, the more turkeys you're going to find. I can promise you that. Think of it like this. You're walking out in the woods, a turkey's been out there all day. It's 10 o'clock in the morning and he's got hens around him and they're clucking and they're purring and the crows are calling and all this. Sometimes it takes something other than a turkey up to get him to gobble. It's like the rubber band. I say the longer in between gobbles, the tighter his rubber band gets. That's why they call it a shock gobble. You're trying to shock him in the goblet. It's like, how? Ah! It's like he goes to gobble and like, ah, man, I didn't mean to do that. That's my take on it. May not be yours, that's cool. Now I'm gonna go outside and just kind of tell you what my mindset is when I'm walking around with this. I get right here and say I've seen turkey tracks. Man, this is a great place right here. Well, before I call, number one, I'm gonna kind of glass right here for a long time and look, and then I'm gonna ease up. I'm gonna get to a place anytime before I grab this tube call. If I can be walking in the woods on a ridge and I'm like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can make one go from here. All right, we'll stop and let's look. Have I got a place to drop down? I got my mossy oak on. I ain't worried about a blind. I just need a tree to lean back against. I wanna make sure I can see and what's behind me. That's the cool thing about setting up. I don't, I don't want the, the gobbler to be able to see way behind me because he may come out looking for that hen and can't see it. So picking that spot to sit down, that's kind of a dying art. You know, so many people stick out decoys and stuff, but when you're slipping through the woods, trying to locate one, get him to release that rubber band, you kind of got to look, all right, if I make one gobble, I could sit down right there. That's just, that's plan B. Hopefully plan A is he's, two or three or 400 yards off and you can ease through there and find you a great spot, but always have that one spot in mind. When you get to the wide open spot, you just, this ain't where you want to do it. I'm going to do it anyway, just so you can hear how loud this thing gets maybe. It's usually that second echo, <sighs> he'll get him. So again, a tube call, it can be tough to use, practice with it. It's, the locating with it, it's kind of a state of mind. It's like you got to get confidence in it, but once you get confidence in it, you won't leave home without it. Clearly the how-to stuff is what you guys like. My first turkey hunt is March the 4th, although I'm going to the NWTF in a couple of days and we're going to do some cuz for one there. Start March the 4th, I'm going to be sending in these SD cards every day. Lauren's going to be editing that stuff. Go to the YouTube channel, Cuz 401, for kind of daily, every other day updates where I'm at, what I'm doing. My first turkey hunt was with six wounded soldiers down in South Florida. That's cool stuff. And I'm going to be sending those SD cards back to her. So go to Cuz 411, subscribe, get your buddies looking, and comment what you want me to talk about or cover while we're in the woods.